We had a knockoff Tamagotchi. It was Godzilla branded. Cool. But it had timing restrictions. So you could only feed it during certain times of day. You could only play with it during certain times of day. So if you missed your window, like, you're it, screwed. It was, you're screwed. So you're just yeah. watching it die. And if you punished it too much, it would die. So, like, you know, you could punish them if they did something bad. What? Okay, them. whoa. I don't, I don't yeah, remember you could, that. You could kill this one. I just, I just remember because I got really mad at my brother and I took his Godzilla <laughs> and I hit the punish button until it died. <laughs> and he was. He was pissed off. He had it for months. <laughs> and he was so careful with the timing to make sure it grew up well. And I just murdered it. Yeah. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Is he over it yet? Probably not. <laughs> it's, it's like one day you'll be hooked well, up you know, to like he, life he support. Did. <laughs> he'll be like, remember that time Punish. Got? Punish. <laughs> Punish. <laughs> <laughs> you like, know, please he, give me more morphine. He's I like, mean, no, I'm not going to hit that button. He is like, a doctor now, so maybe he's like, <laughs> I couldn't save my Tamagotchi, so I'll save everybody else when I can. I love that his mission is, and he talks about his patients. He gets, like, like that, choked up. Like, that Tamagotchi is to him what, you know, Batman's parents being murdered were to Batman. <laughs> he could have been a serial killer, but instead he turned to good. I, oh, yeah, no, that's good. I think yeah. I did that. You yeah. did that. You uh -huh. inspired your brother to be a doctor. Hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? What time? is it steven it's time to talk about death and taxes like we're gonna make it very different so that wasn't music that was just a chainsaw sound yeah that okay. yes that was, that was like a lumberjack psycho yeah. okay. <laughs>welcome to let's talk about death and taxes the show where we talk about the two things that are inevitable in life death and taxes as benji franklin liked to say back in the day um we're getting really familiar with him i yeah, know benji is uh yikes. I, I feel like you have to be really you have to be Benny. in a circle you gotta make sure someone's really okay with being called benji i know i call i talk that i texted divisive. him I, I, does, he, it, does he text you back? He does, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, we gotta get you a doctor. It's just some random number that I just it's like, some dude. <laughs> he was decided this is Benjamin's yeah. number. Yeah. Uh, cool. Anyway, my name is Noah Chrysler. I don't know anything about the law, um, and so that's why I ask these guys questions about it, uh, and they educate me because I don't. I don't know anything. I just know, like, don't steal and don't, like, murder anybody. Those are solid. Those, those are, are solid like, starting That's, like, point. ten commandments. That's yeah. Not, yeah. But still, most of those commandments are laws, yeah, most except of those for are the laws, lying yeah. and the adultery. <laughs> but those used to be crimes. Those used to be crimes, yeah. Oh, huh. cool. Well, yeah. I learned something already. Um, yeah, and uh, these guys are two lawyers. Uh, this is a – we primarily talk about estate planning because we uh, have an estate planning law firm. Um, and also, if you need an estate plan, give us a call, 404-939-7562, or visit us on the, visit us on the web, modernestateplanning.com. Um, but, yeah, guys, introduce yourselves. Talk about some qualifications. Why should people listen to you? Maybe your best hobbies, special skills, oh, fun yeah. talents. <laughs> so, uh, I'm that's a, a lot. <laughs> that's between me and my husband. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Steven Schreiber. I'm a estate planning attorney, and I think I suspect I'm a better election law lawyer than Ru Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> At no point has my face ever leaked die. <laughs> um, so I have that going for me. But I've um, face leaked die. Yeah, yeah. Literally. Oh my god. A side thing. He was doing a press conference, and his, he had like this probably mascara, probably or something, in his sideburns. It what was the pouring hell? down his face during the press conference. It is so disgusting. That's really nasty. And if, they have like lots of memes. If your lawyer Ooh. is leaking, you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but, um, but, um, but I, I'm, I think I'm better than Rudy. I feel pretty good about it. Love um, it. I don't know for a fact, but um, my hobbies now, um, <laughs> watching election law, watch, <laughs> watching our country decay. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we also help people get their shit together, um, kind of line up their affairs, make sure they don't have to think about worrying about what would happen if something were to happen to them, and they can go on and have fun and take up dangerous hobbies. Mm -hmm. Actually, my the, the new hobby I have taken up is I joined a group of lawyers. We're doing a fitness challenge. So now I'm mostly just making myself miserable. Yeah. Um, but I will be the strongest lawyer in any any moment now so i'll have that going for me too i love that i love that <laughs> actually i i don't know there i there are some atlanta like fitness lawyers out there that like that's their whole oh, brand i'll take them yeah not, not today give i'm me, ready give me like six months I'll, we'll make a marketing thing about it it's like a big fight and also law as a profession is a field where 
people have let themselves go just generally appearance wise. Yeah. So in like the in the, in the <laughs> land of the blind, the one eyed man is king. In this sense, like the one reasonably not hideous looking lawyers are like, you're you're the most photogenic. We need to put you on our magazine. <laughs> it's like I love it. Sweet, James. But then uh, you know, but then there's also the lawyers that are like hyper competitive and that's mm-hmm. their whole like driving thing. So like I'm gonna be the fittest one. Yeah. There was a uh, professional wrestler who was a lawyer. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, I think he might still be doing it. The he underwriter. Went, like, he went to Harvard Law, <laughs> and he's a professional wrestler, and he the- is married to someone famous, and I can't remember. Anyways, I'm James Champlin. I'm also an attorney. Uh, my hobbies include pontificating about things that I don't know much about. Mm. Much like Rudy. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, I also was previously the mayor of New York City, um, and I can't talk much about my current clients. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I, we will have a press conference at a Four Seasons, um, maybe a pest control. Yeah, <laughs> they had a lot fewer beds than I thought they would. That was the funniest thing I have ever – like, that – you could not sit down and write a funnier sketch Good than for that. them like, for leaning into it, and that's okay. the only good for them I'll say. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. If you have a certain amount of not being embarrassed – Yeah. Yeah. You can just kind of get away with it. Yeah. yeah. No shame. Yep. It's always a perk. <laughs> I, I, I envy their ability to not be shamed by things that should be shameful. <laughs> <laughs> to like have trying no to embers. incite sedition. Um, cool, guys. On this show, we do a couple different things, but a lot of the show is just answering legal questions that we find on Avo.com. Avo.com is like a cesspool of internet questions, kind of like a Yahoo Answers, but with, like, with a specific flavor of legal advice. Yes. Um, it's it's like really great. They need a lawyer but don't want to pay for one. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like going to like a – I don't know. I was going to say something really nasty. I'm just going to not say that. <laughs> All the examples I thought were <laughs> disgusting positive. too. Uh, but it's so, like going to the grocery store and eating like the grapes. <laughs> just leaving. Or like opening a box of cereal, pouring really, yourself a bowl, and yeah. <laughs> eating it right there. That's what Avo.com is. I love yeah, that. That's great. That's yeah. a really good one. Yeah. And, you know, and just like Avo.com, this is legal entertainment and yes. information – not advice. Yeah. Yes. If you want advice. I have to meet you to get advice. Exactly. Give us a call. Send us an email. We will happily give you advice, but we're going to do My it for money. My advice is to call no, a lawyer. It's going to be free. Some of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any yeah. lawyer. Except for Rudy. Maybe stay away from him. But flag down most other lawyers if you need help. <laughs> um, yeah. If you'd like to submit a question, you can do that. Uh, questions at let's talk about death and taxes dot com is the email. Cool. Without further ado, question number one. Can I do a ladybird myself using deed claim software? My attorney will charge $500 plus filing charges. I am on a fixed income. Um, I own the property um, in my own name, only want, um, but only want to transfer to my son. Um, so I don't know what a ladybird yes, will exactly. is. Yes, that's exactly. I do know yeah. what it is. Okay. Um, and the ladybird deed is named after Lady Bird Johnson, the wife of former President Lyndon Baines Johnson. So it got its name because it was how he left a bunch of property to her. So they they were both. She came into the mar- I think she came into the marriage with more money than him. But as being powerful does, they tend to accumulate a lot of money, especially probably in Texas politics. But um, but when he died, so essentially how Lady Bird deed operates is that it's close. It's close to like a transfer on death deed. So there was a group of properties that were in Lyndon's name that. When he died, he before he died, while he was alive, he deeded them in a way where it automatically transfers to Lady Bird when he died. So when he died, Lady Bird got all of his property without having to go through probate. And she got some tax advantages and the capital gains and so but the main advantage was she didn't have to go through probate and Lyndon had control of her property during his lifetime and then it went to Lady Bird upon his death. Clean, easy, simple. Cool. Um the problem is, is that not that many states actually accept Lady Bird deeds. So we are right. in Georgia, no Lady Bird deeds in Georgia. You can have, um, and that's the first thing I would run by this person. Like before you make a Lady Bird deed, make sure a Lady Bird deed is allowable in your state. Because I want to say it's like somewhere between like 15 and 20 states usually accept them as a matter of course. Mm-hmm. It might be higher than that. Once again, legal entertainment, but, but it's think, not universal. But I think if if in this question she's already talked to an attorney, and you know she has a quote, assuming yeah. assuming that she's quote, talked to an attorney and right. it's good with their state, 
Um, so we can assume that that lawyer has looked into it and said, yes, you can She's do She's made this. it to the one-yard line with this lawyer but doesn't want to pay them. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So my thought is on on something like that that's not a very straightforward conveyance and you're going to have to follow a lot of hurdles to make sure it does what you want it to do, just pay the lawyer. Yes. Yep. I mean, you can yep. use will dra- I mean, can use deed drafting software. Once again, would you – how much do you trust the software? Right. And, um, and do you trust does, it with And if the it doesn't it work – how easy will it be for you to get the people running the software to fix it for you? And you might be dead. By the time you realize right. there's a problem, you'll probably be dead. Right. But. So you just might wind up with a situation where that deed is not accepted and, and doesn't actually do what you want it to do. So you might wind up having spent the money filing it and all the hassle doing it and then or having, nothing. Then potentially having to do probate anyway Yeah. Right. or having to correct it. So I would recommend – Talking with the lawyer, seeing how she can get the – she should get – that lawyer was very kind of her to literally give her all that legal advice and not have charged her yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully she can figure – I would say go through your lawyer as a general yeah. thing because it looks, it looks complex potentially and um, mm-hmm. don't mess it up. And yeah. if hopefully the lawyer will maybe go on a payment plan, whatever, take a card. They're human yeah. beings. Right. Yeah. But get a, use a lawyer. So yeah. just to just to summarize, a ladybird will is deed. basically ladybird a ladybird deed. deed not it, only, a will. it only pertains to a piece of property, <laughs> right. right? Real property, not anything else usually. So that's when LBJ gave his wife Ladybird a bunch of stuff by uh, automatically. So upon yeah. his death, it automatically was hers. She gotcha. just walked away yeah. with. The, the, literally the moment and he was in terrible health we all he knew he was dying but mm-hmm. literally the mm-hmm. moment his he he br- his last breath left his body she now owned all the property cool okay um so that's where it gets the name it's not legal everywhere not legal in every state so make sure it's legal in your definitely state. not in georgia if you're in georgia run to, talk with your real estate attorney yeah and then three would just be uh it's probably fairly complicated to set up and like you want to make sure you do it right so probably get an attorney to do it yeah because a very particular type of conveyance is not uh, certain things like quit claim deeds where you just assign all the interest you own are more straightforward and i would be less nervous about people right. doing it themselves but this is a very particular type of conveyance they are trying to get mm-hmm. very particular benefits from yeah and, and I even think with a quit claim deed i usually still recommend dealing with the lord to make sure you don't mess it up mm-hmm. and what i think is what it boils down to is how important is it to you that this go the way you want it to go as opposed to this not working and just going through the probate proceedings? Because if if you think to yourself, well, I, I would kind of prefer it go this way, but at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal if it just goes the default way, well, then then okay, maybe you can save make that, sure that would cash, Take that same energy and make sure it had a will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think the, mm-hmm. the whole point of labor deed, though, depending on how you want – if you wanted to leave particularly someone outside of her immediate family – than it, or someone who wasn't her natural heir at law. I mean, right. she wants to make sure that deed's okay. Yeah. Right. Or just with one of her children to the exclusion of others and not have other people get involved in it. It's fairly important not to mess it up. I think I just, like, inhaled a piece of dust or something. I'm going to say, like, you look <laughs> like you're about to start crying. Yeah. It's like, I and didn't really na- take na- it so hard. Neither of us were being mean. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it was being mean. We could go. We could, we could turn that up. Do um, we need to take a break? Yeah. No, we're good. Do we're fine. need a minute? We're good. We're fine. try to make you cry? No. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I'll, I'll, get, cry, I'll get personal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're all set. Okay, cool. Thank you for informing me. I didn't. That what a weird named thing for. I also I love Lady Bird fun. Johnson. She is maybe of the first ladies. She's one of the great ones. Cool. Does her background, and she wasn't. She probably made Lyndon do it because she didn't want him to fuck her over. Because <laughs> he was he was a big personality. He was a big personality, yeah. and she dealt with it okay, and did a lot of stuff. And she went to college, which was novel for a lady who was yeah. born in 1908. <laughs> I have a crush on Michelle Obama. <laughs> oh, she's my phone background. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. Michelle Obama could literally tell me to do anything. She'd yeah. be like, she'd be like, punch Noah in the face. I'm like, how hard? <laughs> How hard? Do you want me to put rings on first? <laughs> yes. I mean, if <laughs> yeah. most people told you to do that, like, too. But Obama told me to do it. We, we're, we just no live one in can her, be mad. We're in her world. Yeah. We just. <laughs> like, I love it. All right. Say for Barack, but less so. I had some fun with this one. Um, you guys ready? Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, before you answer, let me finish the whole question here. Sure. Um, can I create a song and use that as my will and just like have the recording of the song be the will? For example, I wrote this little ditty to the tune of We Didn't Start the Fire. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, 
Steven gets my coin collection, Jess can have my liberty, my friends can have my new desktop, and Jamie gets my dog. My mom can have my bank account, my dad can split the whole amount, my cousins get my Robin Hood, and please clear my browsing history. Noah died in a fire. He was super crispy, thinking, hope they miss me. Noah died in a fire. He happened to start it, cooking hot pockets. That's, that's the song that I wrote. You left me out of your song, I Will. Did. I did. <laughs> I quit. I quit. Podcast on your own. I'm out. I'm out. Well, you made me pay you five dollars to watch the social dilemma. Okay. So, uh, like, I may. I only made you pay me five dollars. Well, one. Thank you for thank you for ma- making it a parody, and so I have to pay for it to be um yeah, the yeah. rights. <laughs> Billy Joel. Fair use. Gonna, could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Billy hey, Joel's Steven, coming hard after me. Stephen, like, we have to pay twenty thousand dollars so that we I can use this podcast. Like, I guess we have to pull the. <laughs> well, <laughs> look. If that happens, we would ask them because we talked about this. We would ask them for a cease and desist, and then frame it. <laughs> yes, honestly, yeah. you put that in writing. I yeah. really would yeah. prefer. It. Oh, so the it. answer is. No. Unfortunately, no. Aww. No, no. You have to write those lyrics. So you could have the audio as a supplement, and yeah. you could even write your will in lyrics, I guess. Hila- you Honestly, could. Yeah, you, you could, could be like, I want Bob to be my executor. <laughs> um, you <laughs> could, you could set it You could set it to music. Like yeah, You could okay. actually submit the sheet music as your will, yeah. as really? long as it has certain but things you, yeah, in it. You need That's to print, dope. You need to print the lyrics and then sign it in front of two witnesses still. You could also do a haiku will. Ooh, that's like a weird. series of haiku. That would be, what, that would be a, a fucking. Ti- that would be a tight haiku. If you get your entire will in five lines. Well, five seven that, five. Like, yeah, oh, it no, five? it's three lines. Three it's three lines. lines. Five seven five. Like, we could write a haiku. Like, it's like yeah, you do, Jim you do is it. The, my executor and sole beneficiary, or something like that. You could get like what? Uh, executor is four. That's so right. Executor. Yeah. James. <laughs> beneficiary. Steve. <laughs> yeah. You can wait, ask. wait. He gets all of it. Wow. Yeah. Could yeah. we? Could we have two people sign that? Okay, and this will be a project, that? but you could. This, is, this might be a side project. We could definitely probably get a whole will into a haiku. You would yeah. just have to. Um, unfortunately, you'd still have to post bond inventory return. It, <laughs> it would probably be easier to do a sonnet. Yeah, you'd have six, more lines. Yeah, it's like yeah. Sixteen lines? Uh, uh, no, I, I think it's more than that. The number in my head is fourteen, but I have not looked I at a sonnet since senior year of high school. Yeah, same. same. <laughs> and I don't regret that. Yeah, no regrets. I no one no no. It turns out I've never read a sonnet in my free time. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> like, how that played out. <laughs> also, Miss um, Smith, my English teacher, who's hopefully listening, it was great. Thanks to her teaching about the sonnet. <laughs> never learned it. Also, Judy Romanchuk, also yep. in a, a, from Campbell High School in Smyrna, Georgia. Please refer me business. <laughs> we had to do uh, a whole research paper on someone who did sonnets. Shakespeare. And then as Shakespeare. part of it, we had to write our own sonnet. Yeah. I, yeah. Ooh. I wrote yeah. my own sonnet. I loved my – that was my senior year. My AP English teacher, Ms. Fultz, she was the best. She's an incredible teacher. Yeah. Awesome lady. I don't like sonnets. And yeah, I can't write them. I can't. I can't That's do okay. it. I so can't. let me let me. Bring... You, can, you can make that will work. That's like an extra yeah. credit project. So if, if a client came to me and was like, "Can you make my will into a sonnet?" I'd be like, "Sure." How this is gonna cost a lot more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's not gonna be a good sonnet. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna keep me up at night. <laughs> like the um, clock is ticking. Like I'm okay. gonna follow the meter and the you know rhyme scheme requirements yeah. for it to technically be a sonnet yeah that's it yeah, yeah. it'll be one of those things where i end up waking up at 3 a.m it's like i have the line <laughs> <laughs> sit down and write what the might be line. easier yeah. if we're just doing like straight up poetic stuff would be to just do a will in all iambic pentameter yes that'd be cool like we could do that let me okay but so hold on so we're not it. talking just about pa- we can do poetry and another thing but i want to get to the, the nature music. to the n- the root i was going to say that do you want us to talk about root. your song a little more a little bit no <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Noah, it was a good song Thank you did you. a good job <laughs> that was so diminishing <laughs> that was great do you want a carrot buddy would it be okay if i start calling you 
Weird Noah. Good, nice. Or yeah. Good stuff. Thank Billy, you. Um, I can't think of anything but Billy Joel. God, that's the only concert I've been to in the last like three years. And Billy I'm Joel so, or Weird Al? No, Weird Al. I'm oh, so happy stuff. with that. Um, okay, so so we can't do just the audio file. The audio no, file has audio to be is not sufficient. in writing. Because okay. courts, courts do not admit music in the files. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. Um, so we could do the sheet music. Interesting. What if it was a music video and there was there was it was like a it was like a you know how like in karaoke like you know you ever have like one of those sing along Disney movies? Are you asking like if the court would be willing to screen grab and print every frame of a music video and <laughs> yes. file that as a will? Ten- yes, could we do that? Yes, but <laughs> that is <laughs> such an, an still, asshole move. But it would still <laughs> needed to be signed in front of two witnesses and a notary. Okay. Yeah. So you would have to print out the frame by frame music video with subtitles yeah. then initial each page. initial every single page yes or every, i think it's every screen cap yeah and then sign it with two witnesses and that would be legally binding could somebody Technically. potentially could, yeah could somebody challenge that would that could it get th- easily thrown out? it would, so, it would it, not be easily oh, thrown it would out. for sure be it would challenged be, it, it, oh, maybe if, if the people didn't like your distribution they challenge it gotcha. but, but if, if you left everything if you're like and ma- i'll say this if, right if, now if you were married and had no kids and left it to your spouse in a song she probably wouldn't contest it they would just annoy the court but if it was a situation where people might fight each other that yeah. would provide a basis and for like fighting. the music video <laughs> thing like if i'm the judge and it's being con- like i'm exhausted thinking thinking about it <laughs> and if i'm a judge and i'm looking at this like stack of papers <laughs> where it's one line on each sheet yeah i'm throwing that wheel out well, i don't think she has to base i don't think they are you she because most of the courts in georgia or most of the programs in georgia are usually have women probate court no judges. that's great that's progressive that's she, great. Yeah. They, would, they would definitely hate you i would throw it out i think it would have legal cause Look, if i'm the judge the formalities of the i law. would throw it out because i would say that it indicates a lack of testamentary capacity well the, the judge couldn't make that ev- I mean, theoretically a judge could only decide that if there was evidence hold on i don't care court. what to, people are putting in front of re- me that stack of documents is James enough is, it's James out is not we a need to remember that judge. i'm stupid <laughs> yeah to be fair. we need to take into consideration that I'm an idiot. So what? What is a so testamentary something? Oh, testamentary, testamentary capacity. It means the ability, the capacity to make a will. Dad, anything gotcha. related to testamentary. Yeah. Le- Hold on a minute. Will. This is a good video. So like we I to, went to a we really need nice. To make sure that you're not. In, um, so I would. You're I not would find under any um, mental illness. I would find uh-huh. monomania somewhere in there. What is monomania? That would be an obsession with something that gotcha. is so great that it overwhelms your ability to make a will. But Attention would, or but video creation. <laughs> Attention, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but, like, I mean, you can always reference. You can reference. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can always reference outside materials in your will. Um, like it's okay. not it's it's not binding upon the executor potentially, but it's there. Ooh, you could do like. Um, in addition to this will, I would like to cite the music video that I made, and then you could give it, like, a unique name and, like, cite it. Yeah. And then say, like, a transcript of which is included and is hereby – is you know, and is incorporated herein. Yeah, but you have to, you have to sign the – But you'd uh, still have to sign that incorporation. the other one yeah. as well. It would just be, like, a codicil probably. Yeah. But gotcha. you could I mean – I, what I would recommend is if people were intent on making a video or a thing, which is fine, but write, write a real will. And I'm then gonna make a video. Are you kidding? Write a real will and then maybe put that disc with it, but the court won't look at what's on the disc. Yeah, I'm probably gonna make it like soon. That way, you know, I'm never gonna redo it. I'm just gonna make it really broad so that no matter what situation I died in, it's applicable. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and what it's gonna start with is gonna start with me facing away from the camera. And, and you chair, spin around. And I spin around and say. Hi, I didn't see you there. <laughs> and you and I say, hi, hi, I didn't see you there. If you're watching this, if you're watching this, I I've died dead. in a fire. And then <laughs> I'm gonna, and then, and you then, would explain not seeing you. And then I'm gonna look at the camera and say, cut one. And then I'm gonna turn back around and I'm turn again. I'm gonna say, oh hi, I didn't see you there. If you've watched, if you're watching this, I've been mauled by a bear. Cut yes. two. <laughs> and then I'm gonna turn, and it's gonna be a three-hour video. Of all your potential causes. And then when death. I'm done with the causes of death, I'm gonna say, "Thank you all for being here." I drowned in my I toilet. Have, <laughs> I have. Thank you all for being here. I have a written will that lays out what I would like to happen. <laughs> I love you all. The yeah, end. If we get to a That's tight it. ninety, that would be more watchable. It'll be three hours <laughs> of introduction, oh, and then thirty seconds of content. The end. And That's I know amazing. my family's gonna be like on brand. 
<laughs> they'll be like, I would literally be like, someone watch this. <laughs> it's like, that's yeah. amazing. Lost Ooh, but I will make sure it says like at the very beginning, like if you're an attorney being paid to process my estate, this video is bullshit. You don't need to watch it. Also, and you can't bill my estate for your time. If you wrote the will, you'd be like, I wrote a bullshit DVD. Don't bother. Yeah. Like that would be in the will. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. But like, um, I absolutely love that. I have been mauled by a video. But I would instruct my I lawyer to of tell my family that the video is the will. I don't know. If I, that that was, way they have to watch my, it. My, yeah. my DVD. That's good. Kai, okay, I'm so old. My disc, my, my video would probably not even have anything related to my will. It'll just be me talking about shit that I wanted to get off my chest before I died. Ooh, or so maybe I'll Might like, just be like hot takes or cold takes. I'm like, oatmeal's bad. Next. <laughs> <laughs> that, that dude from the that Chipotle who rolled his eyes at me, you go fuck yourself. <laughs> and go on and on with a random so opinion. So just be like a, like a grievance reel. <laughs> It's a grievances. Maybe. And it, 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 there would be some good things in it, like some, so, something. Cheerios, underrated. <laughs> that are randomly Wait, hold on a Maybe my Original intro. Flavor Cheerios? Maybe my oh, those intro. Are those are like cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a fireplace with a fire going. Yeah. We'll do a gas fire. That way you don't have to like keep gotcha, adding wood. Okay. With a leather chair. Yeah, and for continuity. Lamp. And I'm going to enter the screen and sit in the chair and cross one leg over the other. And then start. And then I'm going to like. Call my dog over mm-hmm. to sit there so I can scratch my dog's head while I talk. A little glass of brandy or something. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, my dog is poorly trained, so it's going to take me like 20 minutes to get the dog <laughs> to actually come and sit and stay there. And then every four minutes of the video, I'm going to have to like stop to get the dog back over. <laughs> you have to have like some yeah. treats with you the whole time. Oh yeah, for sure. I love. I have to have them like in my pocket so that the dog is just like on the, on the opposite side, so they're kind of just like sniffing right. over. Right, right. <laughs> Um, and hopefully it's the same dog or, you don't, or nothing ever happens or your video is, I've like, actually got like, oh that was his dog he had 40 years ago <laughs> oh. actually come to think of it oh my god you have dog treats in your pocket <laughs> that sound on brand <laughs> good stuff you never all know right. when a dog why will come we... up and you have to like get yeah. them to go away James James Champlin friend to all dogs friend of dogs uh, cool put those in your pocket so that you know in this new clip like people aren't just like huh why, why are there dog treats on the table those like, don't they're... look like dog treats they'd be like what rabbit poop on my table <laughs> yeah exactly it's like I don't we did do I miss not... the rabbit clip <laughs> we don't have a rabbit in the office rabbits are terrible pets <gasps> Let... what I love rabbits I mean, they're they're they, they, they not think they, I like rabbits in general but indoor rabbits Rabbits are. I don't think they. Lo- they're designed to live inside people's houses. Yeah, rabbits are cool, man. I watched this show called. Never mind. I'm, that's a but if I, I feel like it's one of like an outdoor rabbit, which I don't think one ever has, because I think they go. My into cousins their own had thing. outdoor rabbits. They live in a hutch. They oh, built, they live cool. like a thing. Okay, they a big giant hutch. Here we go. Um, this one's really long. I'm just gonna read the beginning, like the first intro question, because I think it's. I think it summarizes it pretty solid. Um, cool. Can I found? Who? Hi, welcome to English class, party of party I taught one. high school English. It <sighs> wasn't great. Here we You're go. younger than my English student. Really? Oh, boy. <laughs> like, Can I find out the contents of a will anonymously? I think I was left out by the executor. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, so it depends on the person. Okay, it depends if it's, if it's in the court record. So every will, as a general rule, unless with very few exceptions, is on the public record. So the will's been filed with the court. Um, yes, you can. You, you can. I guess you can do it anonymously. The court doesn't ask who you are when you pull up a can record. Can I see the whole question? I'll sure. See if I can find any like fun little nuggets in there. Sure. But um, oh, that's so long. It is but very if the long. The will is still in the possession of the person who wrote the will because they're still alive or hasn't been probated yet. Then you'd have to be way stealthier to get a copy of it. Okay. Um, so basically, like if somebody, if the executor of the will, if you think that they have like bad intent and they're like not giving you everything that you're entitled to, if they're you, the executor, presumably the will's already <laughs> been probated. Okay. You can literally. You have to go to the courthouse of the county or whatever. Depends on the, in Georgia, it's the county of where the person last resided, mm-hmm. um, and they would have the will on file. Cool. Um, okay. And then you can just go get it. Anybody can do that. Anyone can do it. Yeah, it's a public cool. file. So, so I can just walk into the courthouse and be like, hey, I need some light reading. I want all the wills that have been filed in the last year. Yeah. And fun things like real estate investors in Georgia and other things, they literally will pull up a list of all the people who have filed an estate with the Georgia probate courts and then bother them like hell. Really? But it's public record. You can Anytime it's been filed with the court, you can do it. That's and the same way, if when I got a speeding ticket, I got like 10 things in the mail from lawyers about my speeding ticket. Really? And I suspect it would have cost more to hire them than to pay the ticket. Um, 
So, yeah, but anything that happens in court for the most part, it, unless you're a minor mm-hmm. or some other protected group is in the public record. So Cool. Is there anything in this question? That was a wild ride. Yeah. Um, do you want to read it? It has to do with, like... No, I mean, it's, it's like, go to the court and pull files. Um, so basically it's like, you know, grandma and grandpa told this person that they were in the will. Mm-hmm. And grandpa dies, grandma remarries some jerk who is awful. Aunt becomes conservator of grandma. Grandma dies, hasn't heard anything about either of the grandparents' trusts. Doesn't want to make waves with the aunt who they don't trust. So my oh, thought there are more is, webs to that situation. There are, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on there, and there was like legal stuff with the second husband. But um, if you think that someone is not putting a will into the court so that they can keep your share or cut you out, mm-hmm. you, you can actually go to the court and file yeah, you some f- documents yeah. to either try to have the executorship passed on to you for their failure to actually execute it or to compel them to or to it. compel them to, to do it right so in, in georgia and i'm sure most states it's technically against the law to hold a will more than a year after someone died really yeah um. <laughs> so they say they don't want to make waves right but at the end of the day it's kind of a all right the how, conservatorship is also public record right. also so how so they're worried about their relationship with their aunt not wanting to make waves. They don't trust the aunt at all. So that always tells that tells me it's already a strained relationship. You don't really, want to make waves with someone you don't trust. What do you have to lose by bringing it to a court? Right? Mm-hmm. You'll spend a little bit of money to get the process started, but the alternative is just not not getting any. My and it, and it is, is it worth it to you? And it doesn't matter how much your aunt likes you or doesn't like you. Um, if you get the will in front of a court, then there's going to be oversight. And if you have an attorney to help you monitor it, then you can make sure that if your aunt is not doing things right, um, she could be relieved of the executorship. And, and guess could the potential conservatorship, else. too. That's probably a breach uh, of Well, the grandma well, passed away. Oh, she passed yeah. away. Okay. So there's no – There's a, no more conservatorship. Right. But, yeah, but it still might could, be a civil – But that um, could be something where they could look back over the conservatorship yeah, yeah. and make it, sure there was no asset. Because there might be a civil penalty against right. the aunt for mm-hmm. um, violations of the conservatorship. Yeah. I think one thing one thing that always interests <coughs> more dust. Hello, yeah, no, I think you write even a criminal thing, but probably a civil thing. Yeah. One one thing that always interests me is that like the more, I mean, before this position, I didn't really have much of a look into like the world of like lawyers and legal things. And like one thing that I think is, is always surprising to me is that a lot of this stuff is more like navigating familial relationships with mm-hmm. people and just navigating relationships in general than it really. I mean. I mean, obviously, you know, yes. legal stuff is a huge part of being a lawyer, but like a yeah. lot of it is also just like n- people skills. Yeah, yep. I hate people. No, I, that's <laughs> I like no. A huge part of it is people skills. That's why I went to law school because I like working with people. Yeah, that's super interesting. <laughs> yep, law school is a. Freak. I mean, don't, don't think about. I'm law not school. saying it was a good choice. But yeah, that's why I, did it. <laughs> the peop- I went to I went to a very good law school instead of James. The people who go to very good law schools are hilariously. Usually not people. people. <laughs> There's like some mix of people you want to isolate from society, <laughs> whether it's in an know. office billing papers all the time, but they that, should not interact with the general. That's public. maybe more true at Duke. <laughs> I don't know. There was definitely I felt a like Duke, I went to school with a lot of people. An element people. of people who are like, "Wow, you're just an asshole. We need to keep you away from the public. <laughs> go study yeah. for a couple years <laughs> yeah. and go away." I love that. Like the kind of person who would definitely punch a child to win a case, and that's oh, that's a lot further than I'm willing to go. There were a couple people like that at Notre Dame. But, uh, no, on the whole, we were we were a solid group. <laughs> well, cool. Okay. Uh, um, so anyway, Duke, so fast, anyway, <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm not giving Duke a fucking dime until I pay my student loan to them. Yeah. But anyway, that's real. I hate those calls. Oh my god. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's fine. It's man. obnoxious. Yeah. It's obnoxious. You already you spent the money I, like, I gave you already. Right. Yeah. Have you blown through that already? Yeah. I, how dare you blow through my hundred fifty thousand? Uh, but, but I know that I will because I want football tickets. I, oh, I don't. I don't. Duke football. I, can, oh, I, I don't want. I don't right want in. Duke football tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I can go watch a Pee Wee League game for free. Ooh, Duke basketball is harder to get. It's well, like way well, harder yeah, to get. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't make that joke about Duke basketball. Duke basketball. Well. I have a little. I have a little. All those rant. rings that. Co- <laughs> I have a little rant about my qualms with higher education that we could probably like. That's a sports factory. <laughs> we can. Which is a weird thing. That's true, and like also it's just like so expensive, and like the, I don't know. Administrative bloat. Yep. I watched my last. I mean, I watched my school just devolve into like terribleness. Administrative bloat is a great. That, yep. Yeah. But, but law um, school is a great place to find people you don't like. 
if you want to go to Duke, there's going to be a 10% of people who shouldn't be lawyers. But yeah, but law is mostly dealing with I people. I think Duke is a great place to go to find people you don't like. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, it was, if, yes. <laughs> it, my, just to button this, administrative bloat because of policy. Like, yep. because of student loan stuff yep. by the government. And that's just this big, giant mess yep. that's not easy to clean up. I don't know. Anyway, um, we'll talk about that another but time. Mostly talk, but, yeah, but state law is about 70% navigating people's emotions and 30% attaching law to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the wills and trusts class I took in law school was, like, one of the saddest, like, case law classes I ever took just because like every single case is like this long drawn out probate case because something wasn't planned properly and families get destroyed. Wait, mm-hmm. there are some great trust in estate cases. Okay, the Anna Nicole Smith case that went to the Supreme Court, that was a fascinating case. Oh, no, they're all fascinating, or but Charles they're just Carroll, very sad. Or, yeah. or PBS was Charles Corral, who had a will, and he left his mistress property, and his wife didn't know about it until after wow. he was dead. Oh, that no. was a wow. fun case to read. She got The mistress, I think, got it, actually. <laughs> the wife got everything else. But, wow. um, or, That's wild. Or the case where the dude died, and he left, he, he, he obviously was gay and he left he left his property to his lover Danny and his and the judge had to go through multiple Danny's to wow. figure out which which lover Danny which of the his lovers he was talking about. Yes. <laughs> awesome. like, That's the guy had a type they were all named Danny. <laughs> yeah. I'm like who sleep he has a very narrow type. How many <laughs> Danny's have you hooked up with? <laughs> he says a wall my wall of Danny's like yeah. well these are the D A N I these are the D-A-N-N-Ys. This is a, I These did, are the ones who I actually a, went by Daniel, but I just called them Danny. I had a Denny's run. Yeah, yeah I right. <laughs> I, I need to find it. It was a reference to my Trust in the Stage book, and I've been spending the, like, an embarrassingly long amount of time trying to pull that case citation. So, so if you're out there listening and you know what we're talking about, if you're my trust in the email you Steven. Know. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, cool. This one, I even ordered my old Trust in Estates book off eBay to get that case. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one should be interesting. Uh, I'm just going to read this and, and hopefully, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to read this. Here we go. An old curmudgeon lives on a piece of secluded swampland. He's Florida. hated. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's hated by the people in town because they're irrationally afraid of him. Due to some questionable zoning regulations, squatters begin to move onto the swampland after being kicked out of their homes. This angered, still feels like Florida. No, angered, this is, this angered, is <laughs> angered by this, the crotchety main character visits the local government office to file a complaint. There, he's told that if he can go retrieve something for the town, the zoning laws will be rewritten and the squatters will be told to leave. Wait, that's is not the, how any is of that the works. donkey his lawyer? In this situation? <laughs> the movie, the movie is Shrek. Um, oh, James nailed it. I never saw Shrek. You never have seen Wait, the movie Shrek. What? That's not okay, Stephen. Oh I mean, gosh. everything else is acceptable, but Shrek. Everything else has been okay until now. Until this moment, I love Shrek. I, the line has crossed. But also Shrek is needs, in my top ten. But, I love Shrek. But that dude needs to get a rid of possession. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Um, you've never seen Shrek, ever? No, no. Okay, so Shrek's an ogre. He lives on a swamp. He, the Lord Farquaad is like this little... I'm, I imagine, a, I'm still imagining this as being Florida, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. There's a bunch of fairy tale creatures that uh, get end up getting like thrown out of the kingdom and have to like live on his property, and he's like all upset Do about it. Do they have to live on his property? Yeah, they have they nowhere else to go. To they, were, they were pushed into the swamp by the policies of Farquaad. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so so Shrek, as a disgruntled you know citizen, marches up to the kingdom and is like, hey, Farquaad, this is ridiculous. And Farquaad's like, hey, if you go and rescue Princess Fiona, who is a princess that lives in a tower. Uh, you get to um, evict these people from your land. Exactly. This is okay, and I'm a liberal, yeah. but like that's outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> that like they just the so that sort of the indirect taking of property by the state. Yeah. Um, is not great. Right. Um, but no, he's like a tyrant. That's the whole deal. Anyway, but anyway, but anyway it's like a feudal system. Let's say yeah. this was a real place in, in a real U.S. state. He could kick those people off his property. Really? But he has to be careful that he doesn't let them stay too long to establish open and notorious squatters' ownership. rights. Do you get squatters' rights? Uh, not in Georgia. You can't. Not, not really. I'm sorry. You might establish you a tenancy. It's, it's harder than you think. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have, to, harder estab- than you have you to establish tenancy, and you may be able to hold over. 
Um, which is usually yeah. like how most. And it takes like 20 years. 20 yeah. years. Yeah. It takes it's, a very long it's time. It's not like if someone well. shows up, it happens to. Like some uh-huh. states, if someone happens to stay in your Airbnb and too long, now they live there. And there's <laughs> ways to like. There, there's ways you can accelerate that. But even the accelerated one is at least like. I want to say like six five or, or like oh, six to 10 years. Yeah. Wow. But like. So if. if generally, the, it's like a super long time. So if the. the Fairy tale creatures stayed mm-hmm. for six to ten years of the accelerated thing, or twenty some years. They could have had squatters' rights, and it depends on how they were there. He should have been right? able to, but he should have literally, <laughs> even without a writ of possession, because he's not. Writ of possession is t- typically something you would only need if you had been letting them voluntarily on your property, renting yeah. it, and then had to kick them off right. for non-payment. It of has rent. to be open, notorious, and exclusive, right? So, like, they're all like. In his yard, right? Like he's still in the house, right? He's still using that property too. Mm -hmm. For them, it's not exclusive use of the property, so they're probably not looking at adverse possession as opposed to establishing a tenancy. Unless it like built like a fence or something, or built like a whole homestead. He does, yeah. He has like a little outhouse. Well, no, if if they built, if they built one, among their little segment, gotcha. Like if they fenced off a section of his land, and they're like. Don't come here. Also, I don't think Shrek owns under, like, the sort of, swamp. Or, or you don't think he owns the swamp? Okay. No, I don't. Well, he says, get out of my swamp. Well, I mean, he's, like, being possessive, but, like, it's not, like, his, I don't think he owns it. could be, like, it. a I think, color or title I think Farquaad owns people... it because it's all feudal. Like, Farquaad owns all of it. Okay. It could. If, it, if that's the case, and it's the... Feudalism is just like a it's, is like a hierarchy we're, of tenancies. We're back in like yeah. 1500s England. Right. Like, no, that's about... absolutely what it is. We're talking like swords, bows, and arrows. Yeah. And like but, but if it, 75% but if, but it, inside but if Notre Dame jokes. the property is Shrek. So let's say a property does belong to Shrek. Yeah. Because I think should, it's more interesting if that is He should just case. be able to eject them. He technically has a legal right to have the police come in. Well, he should use the state. But mm-hmm. theoretically, it would happen in like a real U.S. state. Or someone mm-hmm. that's came onto your property and set up a tent. Yeah, um, you, you can boot able, them off. You can eject them generally from gotcha. the property. I have a couple questions um, regarding Shrek's estate. Let's assume that he owns this piece of land, and he's got he's got a little cabin, a little hut. He's got an outhouse. He's got a little hot tub made out of mud. It's great. He's got he makes earwax candles. I can't believe you've never seen Shrek, Stephen. Shocking. It is honestly, I'm upset is a little. <laughs> We're gonna have to watch it like in the oven. on the clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is is it that shocking? Based on the, all the movies I haven't seen, yes, it is. That is yes. that is that yes. it's, it's a cultural moment. Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy is so good. Yeah. Um. Okay. It was like one of the first like big animated features that appealed yep. to adults as much as it did to their kids. Yep. It, see, those kind of movies inherently are like, oh, I'll watch it later. It was like, it was okay. like what moved the needle. And then later, past. like twenty years had passed, and I was like, I really should. It was like the first like big DreamWorks movie, yeah. wasn't it? Like, cause cause Toy Story came out, and that was Disney, and then like I have seen Toy Story. Or I'm sorry, that was Pixar. It was Pixar. It was yeah. Pixar. Um, which now is owned by Disney. Everything is owned by Disney. DreamWorks. Yeah, is, DreamWorks is owned by Disney now, right? Is it? Is it? I think so. I don't no, it's not. It Maybe is. not. I don't think so. I don't I'm, think it is. I don't know. Um, Universal Studios owns no. DreamWorks. Oh, yeah. that, that would be. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Universal. Be, I think, I think, I think that's Disney. part of the other no. conglomerate. It's like a Viac. It's, it's part of some other. Bigger I know Viacom owns Paramount. Okay, but anyway, Toy Story came out, and then like. DreamWorks was like the main like it's competitor. competitor. Yeah, and it was and so they like innovated on it. And it, watching the animation now is weird. Anyway, I'm sorry. I love Shrek. I can't believe it's wild. Okay, so fine. I, I could quote I the whole movie. Shrek. I love it. Um, <laughs> Honestly, that's a I nice bolt. I like that bolt. I'm not gonna lie. I having Shrek spoiled like 20 years later. It's fine. It's probably been spoiled to me several times, and it has not affected me even a oh, little bit. What do you know about Princess Fiona? Yeah, do you I know, know anything. <laughs> Is, the, is that Cameron Diaz voice? Dude? It is. It is. I don't know much about it. Yes. That's about all yes. I know. Right, oh, that's so funny. Yeah. All oh, right. I love uh, that. What do you know about hybrid animals? <laughs> I know nothing about hybrid animals. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> yeah, you don't like, need to watch Shrek. You have to, if I came to I'm Shrek, a flying talking doggy. If, if, if I, I to, love that If movie. I came to Shrek with a background and knowledge of hybrid animals, I might be closer to a serial killer <laughs> or some sort of well, human centipede. I meant centipede, in the context like, of the movie. Right, exactly. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Human um, centipede, another great thing that Netflix recommended. It was a law school. Oh, my God. There were like oh a my wave God. all my friends, and I were like very much like, they were really pushing this movie. Yeah. It's like, have you seen the humans recommended for you human centipedes like what about my life <laughs> so i had my <laughs> friend alvin come back to my house for thanksgiving to hang out with my family and we watched human centipede with my mom oh my I word watched it with my brother and, and at my the s- end of it yeah. alvin just turns to me he's like 
what is wrong with you? Yeah, I watched it with my brother. Did, did you know what it was about? Like, no. well, no. yeah, I mean, but like, well, the name is pretty. I didn't know how. I knew. This. I knew generally yeah. that it was about sewing people to people <laughs> in a certain <laughs> arrangement. Yeah, I did not know how graphic it was. Yeah, my, I oh watched my it with my God. brother and now sister in law, <laughs> and it was like complete. It was like when you start the movie and everyone just goes quiet. Mom and we don't was know how to stop it. Mom was upset. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. she troopered through it. She made it through the whole thing. I think she did. I think yeah. It, that's amazing. That's Your a, mom's a saint. That's one of the few movies that okay. I, I've watched in stunned silence. We also did that with <laughs> yeah. The Babadook, which is really – Mom's like, so this is like a movie about a crazy bad mom. What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> it's like I'm, cr- I'm just like – Nothing the movie okay, didn't already warning. say, Mom. I wanted to anyway. talk about the beloved children's film Shrek and not The Human Centipede. <laughs> you have to come back to that because there's, Stop. A, there's a ton of legal issues. Because Steven hasn't seen Shrek. <laughs> yeah. There, there are a ton of legal issues in that movie. Just All right. Like so many – something even oh, up into a state law. Okay. I'll come back to that later, though. Here we go. The movie Shrek. <laughs> Not the human centipede, but the movie Shrek. Does the, the human movie. centipede write one will, or does each link get their own will? <laughs> and could the doctor be a beneficiary, or would that be undue influence? If I merge myself with another person, does, what That's happens to my old will? That's a great question. I mean, I will do a, a human centipede clip on the show, but like, I just didn't think. Uh, that let's be let's the human not. Centipede. We already are. We're okay, deep in it. We're in the but midst. But, but we've been about. very carefully tiptoeing around you know, certain yeah. things. Do you know yeah. Billy Joel would charge me money? I think human centipede would give me money to like, <laughs> to play their clip. They'd okay. be like, God, we need that. We need some residuals. Here we go. Shrek. Let's get yes. back in it. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. Shrek. Okay. The movie Shrek is about how Shrek, you know, slowly kind of becomes more social as as time goes oh. on. Right. He learns to kind of accept the help of friends. That's very Western and capitalist. Exactly. Us. Exactly. We're in, we're in the communist version. He just kills everyone in a purge. Well, in the communist version, day. he doesn't own the swamp. So right. There's he no does issue. He does swamp, and he has to. <laughs> it's just co- like, it's just <laughs> cold, and he starves to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he end. runs out of bread. And, and, um, and the movie is literally God, like he's just literally taking his last breath. And yeah. you think he's taking his last breath, but then he breathes one more time, <laughs> like ten minutes later, and then he finally dies in the credits run. Yeah. And that's how like. My, a good 5% of Russian films in. <laughs> so the movie Shrek yeah. is about how Shrek slowly kind of, yeah. you know, he, he becomes more social and, if, yeah. and he accepts other people in his life. Um, cool. I was thinking it'd be fun to like talk about his estate at each stage of his kind of progression, right? So at the beginning of the film, he doesn't have anybody close to him. Let's assume that he owns this swamp. Um, what happens to Shrek if he, you know, he's a big guy, he might keel over with a heart attack someday, which well, would be awful. A, 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 <laughs> living on a swamp seems inherently dangerous. Exactly. Own, yeah, right? he may drown in the mud. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's assume Shrek passes. God, that sounds terrible. Let's yeah. assume Shrek passes. Yeah. Number one, if you know nobody and nothing, can you get a will? And like, what would you put in that of will? And you, number you two, you really should get a will. Number two, number two, if he dies without the will. Um, what happens to his property and his possessions? Well, I guess it's hard. You you must know someone or somebody. He knows nobody. He's he's like an outcast. Yeah, he lives family. in the middle of the swamp. The only yeah. people he knows, he shouts at. How did yeah. he get there? He was ousted by his family, and he like goes and finds a swamp to like make a homestead. Yeah. So he knew his family. Yeah, but like he, they're estranged, and I, he doesn't know them. So anymore. they would. They but would, if he died, if he had no will, I'm gonna start with the, the second question. But yeah. if he did die without a will, they would still get it. Right. He's oh, still okay. entitled to it. Right. They would do an air search. They would try to find the heirs. Um, and then they would do publication. Yeah. Who's who's they? The court. The, the court. court. Yeah. And who, okay. it's someone filed to get possession of the swamp and realize – let's presume he had a deed to the swamp or right. registered it somehow. They would do it – someone would be like, who owns that swamp? And they'd find out that this dead guy – or whatever owns it, Shrek, gotcha. and then they do an air search and then probably find his nearest relative to do something with it. But that I guess maybe they're really flirting it up and they try to drain the swamp to build a shopping center. <laughs> um, then, then whoever the shopping center is, whatever. I really yeah. worked on this when they were building a Target when I was in worked at a law firm. We had to like find like a zillion pieces of heirs property so that they could build the Target. Wow, mm. um, that's interesting. So when they do that mm-hmm. example, they have to find a bunch of people to give them the money, more or less. So, so before that air search happened, they would like they would do a like somebody would have to like want to buy the land. So or something. Tool, yeah. Either they want to yeah. buy land or the government want their property taxes. Or, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Often it's like late taxes are going to be like a triggering event for the government to look into it. Gotcha. Yeah, but the government then has a tax sale and forecloses on it. Then the government needs to know what to do with the money. Gotcha. And also it now right. owns a property. All right. A <laughs> little bit later in the film, um, 
But also, just Shrek have a will. Even if Shrek was like, I wanted to go to anyone but my family. Yeah. You could theoretically, not theoretically, you could you could have a will that has a sole purpose of disinheriting people. Yeah. But then it would still go to your heirs who haven't disinherited. But I will say this, you know. So say his family's all gone. He mm-hmm. has no family. He has no friends. There's nobody. There's nothing, and he has some stuff. Eventually, that would revert to the state. Eventually. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen it happen because they've always been able to find somebody, even like your eighth cousin, whatever, twice right. removed. Mm-hmm. But you could conceivably see a scenario mm-hmm. where the state mm-hmm. either takes it or the state buys it more or less and holds the funds for someone to come out of the woodwork. Right. Later in the movie, Shrek meets Donkey, who becomes his like best friend by default. <laughs> like, is his only if you friend. Have your one friend. The only person who can stand Shrek. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and so uh, d- they obviously don't have a legal relationship as best friends. So um, if if I can't believe, of course, I haven't recognized that yet. <laughs> <laughs> My when, BFF. When are we going to legalize <laughs> ogre donkey marriage <laughs> or, this, or friendship? We should have friendship in the w- w- yeah. <laughs> Um, so what would have to happen in order for Donkey to inherit? He the would swamp? have to leave it either in a trust for the don- mm-hmm. benefit of the Donkey or in a will. For Not him. the Donkey, Stephen. His name is Donkey. His name is Donkey. It's a character, Stephen. He does have a name. No, that's his he name. He has a name. The name is donkey. is donkey, and he is happens to be a Donkey. Well, that's, voiced by Eddie Murphy. Yeah, well, that's like spot on. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a very on the nose name. Yeah, yeah, but he would either you would convey it to Donkey by um or he could leave like a by deed, by will or by trust. Okay. Um, but you would have to do something. Yeah. For for your property to go to a friend, for a member like someone who's not just a member of your family, you mm-hmm. have to yeah. document that. Gotcha. Yeah, and, and yeah, and then if Donkey dies or predeceases them, you can then house de- designate an alternate designation, which could be Donkey's heirs. If you're like, "Fuck my family," don't mm-hmm. right. leave it to Donkey's heirs. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, um, later in the film, Shrek gets married. Um, assuming mm-hmm. he created the will when he was friends with Donkey, mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, would he have to create a new will now that he's married? Yes. Yes. So a will. Because so, if a will is not written in anticipation of that particular marriage, um, it doesn't apply to that spouse. Um, so I would want to redo the will. Um, mm-hmm. A trust or a deed, less so, but I would still want to reevaluate that again. That's kind of looking at the whole thing. Okay. But. Yeah. Sweet. So so he's getting married. So that's when you redo your will. So like, if you ever have like a marital, yeah, yeah. definitely thing. want to redo your will when you get married. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Um, later, and maybe if also if you have a prenup with her, that you'd also want to account for that with the will as well. I wonder if they have a prenup. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I think in this case, I don't think Shre- it sounds like a princess. Shrek would probably not want a prenup. And yeah. Kind of. He's gonna marry into some money. Well, yeah, no, Shrek wouldn't. So maybe the want princess a prenup, does, but I think she probably would. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, makes sense. But I think having the military and stuff like that might make it a non-issue. He might just disappear if she's unhappy with him. <laughs> um, cool. We're going back to feudal times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, later in the film series, because they made five of these movies, Stephen, you need to watch them. Five? They were a box five? office hit. There was I, like there's four. five of them. The first three are worth watching. I remember, yeah. the, I remember Shrek 1, 2, and 3 existing. I did yeah. not know there was a four. Shrek 2 is those, amazing. Weren't four and five? I need a uh, hero. That freaking song is so good. You guys know that? From no. the 80s? No, like, but like there's a there's a fairy godmother like and she does like a... That's a Footloose song. Oh, that... Yeah, she does this show-stopping number at the end, and it's like it's like the big culmination battle scene. No, and get, she's like it singing. Very, it's a it's very musical. It's great. It's a, it's the one of the best movies yeah. that have ever been made, and like you need to watch. It kind of brought it was the uh, the monkeys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They brought them back. Yep. Um. Cool. Later in the series, Shrek has three children: uh, Farkle, Fergus, and Felicia. Um, and they're triplets. So what then? Let's say he has this sort of will this weird he's... Shrek human hybrid. Uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> Got to watch the movie, Steven. Um, so so would he then have to like redo his will if he had to? Yep, Yepers. Yep. Um, <laughs> because um, the children also. So theoretically, well, the thing with the language of those will if has, he had it a well written. Yeah, yeah if you had a well written will, it would. It, well, it depends. You might want to alter the beneficiaries anyway mm-hmm. if he left it to someone other than the spouse or thing. Because even because yeah. like even afterborn children, they would still be entitled to a share. But it's hard because most r- wills that we would write, they would include they would have a class yeah. of children as beneficiaries. But if he didn't include that class at all, maybe it wouldn't. 
I don't know. But I would say yes as a general rule. Look, talk to your estate lawyer after you have kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're three, that feels like a lot. Um, yeah. But then you might also want to talk about setting up a trust because if you, both you and um, the princess die, then you want to have a, someone responsible to manage right. the yeah the mix of the swamp in the the wealth of the realm yeah like in a responsible manner so she doesn't actually own she's like ousted by her family too it's nice they have that in common did, did they no give more her, spoilers sorry did they give her hopefully we're, we're she only t- going to spoil it as necessary for a state landing <laughs> hopefully, hopefully she got some sort of landing like golden parachute from royalty and that's exactly right that's my last question later <laughs> in the series even further they actually inherit like a kingdom um and so as like, one does yeah <laughs> so uh, I'm waiting for I'm waiting to inherit my kingdom <laughs> <laughs> um, so would that be another opportunity to like? All right. Yeah, that would be a really good opportunity to look that over one more time. If you yeah. inherit something like a kingdom, then you're in like you definitely need some. Imagine uh, all that you, paperwork. You yes. need you yeah. need a lot of uh, structure to manage things. So things like trusts and maybe some LLCs tossed in there for a good measure. I, gotcha. you're, you're talking about the kingdom like a banana republic, <laughs> and I, I'm on board with this. It's a feudal kingdom. It's they're a small like, kingdom. Like yeah. they are autocrats. Yeah, they're autocrats. But it's like the Panama Papers, where they're like it's like a dictatorship where the leadership. Yeah, is that's actually a really good point. I mean, if we're world. really if we're really rolling with the Shrek theme, you don't really need to do anything. Anything because you're right. the now you have the king and queen like you just kind of just kind of be want. like oh this is it yeah yeah if you think God you're king. gonna stay there for the rest yeah, of your life you don't need to protect your assets from taxation because you, you are, are tax taxation. Tax. yeah interesting cool if you come to tax man you're in a solid estate planning position for everyone else <laughs> yeah. if you when you're the tax man you get to plan other people's estates for them yeah, yeah. mine that's <laughs> yeah. um cool. but I, I would recommend that as like a plan b to estate planning is taking over a kingdom <laughs> i love that um i think the main moral of the story when i get my kingdom i'm out of here yeah i don't believe like, you peace out i have a kingdom now motherfuckers <laughs> like, um I think the main moral of the story is that Stephen, you need to watch Shrek. Obviously, like, like that's at least crazy. Shrek one and two. Yeah, those probably are probably three. Yeah, that's a lot of time. Shrek three, you could skip. Are they all like ninety minute ones? Or yeah. Are they like yeah. okay, good? Yeah, they're it's all pretty great. short. It was like it was like a Star Wars movie. It was like three hours. I'm like, God, it's not go. one where it drags when you're watching it either. It's yeah, pretty, it's a pretty quick pace. It's Shrek. Like, if I have to go take it's, a bathroom well, break in the midst of a movie, I'm already annoyed. It's designed <laughs> to keep eight year olds involved. So exactly. Like it's pretty fast paced. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I watch movies like an eight year old. We I did. Get really bo- I get bored very easily I in a movie. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we did Shrek the musical in my high school and I got to oh. be Donkey and it was the best that, thing Yeah, ever. that's on brand. I get that. Yeah. 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 Is, is so there a recording fun. of this? It is. It is. Can we get it's, that onto our... Did you do the whole thing in an Eddie Murphy It was, yeah, it was, I, it was a school full of white people people was and my music director offensive? was the whitest person in the world and like nobody like told me like hey yeah, like you probably shouldn't yeah oh, and it was Eddie more Murphy. i was a character voice it was bad uh, looking back it was definitely I'll awful give you, i'll give you back the five dollars <laughs> that james took if you if we upload that to our youtube page <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely out there somewhere $5 watch to noah me. do a racist voice <laughs> they don't for have a to whole know. play for a yeah. whole play five performances for like thousands of people in the Wait, entire town costume uh He's yeah like, it was a donkey costume please, and their makeup was it was i i wait, mean what, wait, was, what the was the makeup it was it was gray okay. but it was like face not paint it was definitely like not like making my face brighter it was was yeah, it, it gray not, face gray. paint yes did you have like a giant donkey nose on or was no. it just gray face paint uh so you were in Black face. It was really, really, really racially insensitive. This is looking back, so problematic. It is really I bad. I need to see this immediately. It's really bad, and I. D- oh, but at the time, like no. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know. I was. I was it. Is it the you, responsibility no. of the child who was cast how, in the how, play? Wait, what was uh, this? I guess I was seventeen, so I probably should have known oh. something. But old like, enough imagine, to old enough to almost vote. Um, I don't know about this. Oh my god, that's so depressing. Well, but here's the thing. You weren't in hey, costume you? to be a person yeah, of no, color. No, you were, you were, you were yeah, an yeah. animal. Yeah, yeah. Right. I but then James when you go on you. to do an Eddie Murphy voice, yes. it kind of retroactively yes. makes it Does more it? racist. It's bad. It is bad. I need, I, I need to judge. 
Okay, this is what I'll do. If you can send this to me, I'll run it by a panel of up to 10 black people <laughs> and get their opinions on it. <laughs> like, no, I just... I mean, I, it's I, definitely I would, awful. I would love to focus group things that are in the gray zone. I'm like, going to own it. Like, I'm going to own it and plead ignorance. I'm going to say that it's oh, awful. No, I don't think it's intended to be racist. I think it was yeah. awful. <laughs> I think that if I had, like... I feel like there was a big wave of that. I mean, I guess I went to college what after, year was so I this? met more people. It was 2013, 2014. Okay. And like, if it helps that I've been after I had been through my three Halloweens of blackface. <laughs> and oh my God. James, I think you're the only 11. person who doesn't have to worry about this on the show. <laughs> so, and they were people I, much older. I don't older. know that I've ever done blackface. <laughs> And they were much older. No, I need to do blackface, but oh, okay. when I yeah. would encounter people in blackface. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. And then one year, the Duke put a picture of someone in blackface on their athletics website. They were like, look at these athletes wow. in costume. And people were like, that girl's wow. in blackface. That's and Duke was wild. like, oh, let's pull that one down. That's wild. Yikes. But no, I just, Packard I think. made it all the way to Deadspin, which was at the time a really good sports blog. Now it's trash. I think <laughs> it's a snapshot of like. My high school was so white and ignorant, and just like totally, just a total bubble, and that's why I wanted. To no make one an realized that it was offensive, and if they had, they probably wouldn't have done it. Exactly, yeah. or not enough people. I mean, I think there was and, definitely and some people that you, didn't you say were doing anything. a character, right? It so happens I, that the character James uh, seems way more intrigued than me is offensive. <laughs> I'm like, and yeah, done by Noah. You know, just like, case. but like, I mean, if you. We gotta end the show, but like if you, I mean, I don't know. Never mind. I I'm only just saying to these things to make you squirm. I, I feel I guilty about that. it. I regret it in hindsight. I'm just, and like, I'm just all, I want, all, all, I, all I want is to see this. I, if I watch <laughs> Shrek one, two, and three, can I see this? Well, I think um, what we'll do and when I'll we're done, do and they'll throw in five dollars. What, you gotta, you what gotta we're gonna do when we're done with this? Specials. I'm gonna go ahead and play a little clip of Donkey's dialogue so yeah. that Stephen knows the voice that you were fascinating. It's bad. And he may understand. It's bad. I will watch the it's bad. and Venmo you five dollars to square you up with James, and then I can. Then I want to see this um, very tr bad high school performance because every single high school performance ever made has been bad. I uh, even when I was in high school, I'd be like, "Oh, this is." I was not in the drama or theater. But I don't know. I was in Footloose. We crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll see that too. If just I, I love to I, see I that will, actually. Just, David Sedaris writes the. And have you ever? Got on ice. He, cr he goes to he has a thing where he writes uh, uh, as, as a satire but it's like a, re a critical reviewer of children's high school of hilarious children's music oh that's amazing it's like so it's little kids like the, the fourth grade class they sing off key it hilarious like Cosette real. broke down crying because she forgot sharp. her lines you were sharp that's so funny you know, sorry. I, love I that. give it a one thumb down, two thumb. <laughs> he gave like painting reviews to children. Uh, anyway, one of my favorite to short to stories. to end this, this is like my worst nightmare. <laughs> like this is like a permanent like oh, I don't know. I'm having I'm having a great morning. I know. So. <laughs> great. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> anyway, I hope that the people viewing this don't think, oh yeah, Noah did this bad intentional, like because he thought it was funny at the expense of this entire group of people. That was not what happened. I was an ignorant young boy and now I'm trying to grow into a self-aware uh, adulthood and it's, it's hard <laughs> anyway um, Keep digging, man. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! guys thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed this let us know post a comment guys we went to the trouble of creating you a fantastic PDF listed in the description of this video it is a summary of the key mistakes to avoid when planning for your estate um, you can go get that Stephen and James both wrote it together and it is a summary of all of the mistakes they've seen people make as they think about estate planning. Don't make those mistakes. Your family is the ones that's going to pay for it and they're not going to like you very much. So that's how you go and avoid them. Click the link in the description. You can get that PDF. It's absolutely free. You're welcome. We're so generous. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you would like us to plan your estate, give us a call 404-939-7562 or visit us on the web modernestateplanning.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.